Let's go ahead and explicitly find the velocity function in the case where we do not neglect air resistance. Here is the differential equation we are looking at. G and rho are both positive constants. And we're going to separate our variables. And let me actually do this in stages, because this is going to give us a bit of information we're going to use soon. Let me start by dividing both sides by negative rho. Negative one over rho d v d t equals g over rho. The negative signs cancel plus v. And the information I want to extract from this is that this expression on the left is positive. So this expression on the right is also positive. Let's look at this claim. Negative one over rho is clearly negative. D V D T is acceleration and acceleration is also always negative. Let's think that through. The object is launched upwards, let's say, with some velocity. It's moving fastest here. As it increases in height, air resistance and gravity combine to slow it down. So its velocity is decreasing. When it reaches its maximum height, its velocity is zero. As it starts to fall, its velocity becomes negative. And here's where the difference between velocity and speed become integral. As the object falls and falls, it will speed up but as it falls, its velocity is getting more and more negative, if you will pardon the kind of tortured syntax. What I mean is that the velocity is getting large, but it's getting large in the negative direction which means it's actually decreasing. So from the moment the object is launched to the moment it hits the ground, velocity is always decreasing and acceleration is always negative. That little detour is going to be useful to us shortly. Let's finish separating the variables. We'll divide both sides of the equality by this. And we'll multiply both sides of this equality by a dt. And now we'll integrate 
the left and the right side. And here's where this observation is going to be useful. If V plus G over rho is positive, one divided by a positive number is positive. Ordinarily, you'd have absolute to value symbols in this natural logarithm. But since everything is positive, there's no need. Multiply both sides by negative row. And we're maybe not going to do what you'd expect here. If C is an arbitrary constant, then negative rho C is also an arbitrary constant. That is true, but we're not going to write to D here or anything like that. We're going to keep this constant and this constant separate. And now we will take the exponential of both sides. On the left-hand side, the exponential and the natural logarithm are inverses of one another. This is composition. So they undo one another. On the right-hand side, if we have the exponential of addition or subtraction, as the case may be, we can split it up into two exponentials. And now, in a sense, we could call this problem finished. Our goal was to find the velocity function v, and we have accomplished that goal. But we're going to work a little longer with this because we don't love this constant C. In this equation, almost everything has a real world meaning. Velocity, drag coefficient, time, drag coefficient, gravitational constant, drag coefficient. And then you have this C, which is just an arbitrary constant of integration. You are definitely going to have some kind of constant. I mean, this differential equation is not an initial value problem and therefore does not have a unique solution. But it would be nice if we could have a slightly more meaning 
a full constant, then this completely unknown C. Here is the equation we had immediately after our integration step. And here's where we wound up after performing some algebra. Let me state our goal. It will be to replace C, this arbitrary constant of integration, with something meaningful. In particular, let's get it so that this velocity equation is in terms of the initial velocity, v sub zero. And to do that, we'll work with this again for a bit. By the definition of initial velocity, when time equals zero, the velocity is the initial velocity. And taking these values and plugging them in there, negative one over rho times the natural log of the initial velocity plus this constant equals c, t equals zero, so that went away. Multiply both sides by negative rho. this velocity or this natural logarithm involving this velocity is negative rho c. Exponentiate both sides. On the left, the exponential and the logarithm will cancel out. And this gives us e to the negative rho c in terms of three meaningful constants, gravitation and drag coefficient. So we can take this and plug it in for e to the negative rho c and find that velocity equals this term. Times this exponential. minus that term. And everything here has a concrete real world meaning. No more arbitrary constants. Here's initial velocity, gravitational constant, drag coefficient, drag coefficient, gravitational constant, drag coefficient. Sometimes, not always, 
Textbooks and other resources will rewrite this equation further. They'll say this g divided by rho looks familiar. If you think back to when we analyzed this um, using just by looking at where the derivative is positive and where the derivative is negative, negative g over rho was terminal velocity. V sub tau equals negative g over rho. Incidentally, you can now see that the second way, if you take the limit as t approaches infinity of the velocity, this is constant, this is zero, it goes to zero because of this negative sign. So as t approaches infinity, velocity approaches this term, which we'd already figured out was terminal velocity. And as I say, not always, but sometimes, you'll see a textbook and other resources, rewrite the velocity function in terms of terminal velocity. Now that we've found the velocity function, we could also find the height function function. Velocity is derivative of the position. Let's do that as its own video.